Hello, can you hear me loud and clear all the way from, I was going to say Cape Canaveral, but you all know where I am, sitting in my studio and the sun has just disappeared from the west of Scotland. Okay, hope I'm coming through loud and clear. Uh, we've got everything charged up, so don't worry. The only thing that's not charged is me. I'm having one of those Mondays. What's going on? You know, I'm feeling a little bit flat. Okay, best behaviour coach. We're going to talk about heart rate. So if you're joining live, where are you joining from? Tell me. This wonderful community we have, I want to reach out, give you a virtual hug, a kiss. Hmm, yes. Swear, share some sweat. I'm going to share something with you tonight that you've probably never seen before. The kinetic heart rate zone titles. They're unique. I don't think anyone else in the world uses them. And uh, they all start with S. So they go from zone one all the way up to VO2 max. See if you can start guessing what they are. Beginning with the letter S. You can do this if you're watching on Catch Up as well. Hey folks, wonderful. I'm going to be going like looking from left to right, left to right. So I've got two screens and I'm trying to keep check of the chat. Okay, so we are going to do some questions. Hold back. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay. I'll give you the cue, but you can think about something. I may give you some time if I can get through this in one piece and have some time for some questions. Why talk about heart rate, coach? It's so old fashioned. Well, I am old and I'm not very fashionable, but there you go. Okay. But heart rate is what the doctor once said to me when in hospital, a vital statistic. Now, vital is kind of the clue, isn't it? It's kind of important. Now, most people have little heart rate monitors, clipping on, watches, all sorts of things. Okay, so most people are not using power correctly. And I'm not calling anyone out, okay? but we're certainly not using heart rate to its potential. So let me throw out with you, before we sort of dive in, I want to cut the cake in half. Boom, right down the middle. Heart rate, low zones. Power, high zones. Okay? It's an easy way to use it. Now we can have heart rate on and off. Now when I say off, you've got to understand, sometimes I use terms that relate to me and other things. Off means not necessarily in another planet, stuck in a cupboard, in a drawer because you can't find it. It means off my screen. Cannot see it with my half a good eye, okay? So I'll refer to things as off, so please forgive me if I mean you haven't got it with you. You'll be recording things and then analyzing later and as Obi-Wan Kenobi said to the young Skywalker, you're standing on my fucking coat. Okay, no, he didn't say that, did he? No, he said, let go, Luke, let go. There's a joke there that came into my head, but it's a joke that is uh, inappropriate and it refers to what you're touching and what you need to let go of. So, stop that, coach. Okay, let's move on. Heart rate. Okay, so I want to go through zoning because that seems a big post, you know, a big problem. And it, it definitely is when we test for power and we backtrack with heart rate. So we're going to get that solved in this session. Real simple. We're going to go all the way back to when zoning first started. When I was just a young boy, a teenager, in fact. Yes, that was a fucking time when I was that young. Okay, right. So, coach. You've got a few things to share. Anybody notice something on the main screen here that's a bit different? Three, two, one. Nobody got it? TikTok. <laughs> and they all did on TikTok. We have started TikTok, please. We have 31 followers on TikTok. By the end of this show, I want at least 32 followers on TikTok. Kinetic Cycle Coach, go and find me if you like short content and you're thinking how the fuck did you do short content coach <laughs> well i didn't okay there is a secret with the people i'm working with but i am going to be coming uh, a semi 
amateurish. Yes, at it. I'm going to get better. So get on there. You're going to see it. You're going to love it. Okay, right. Coach, shut the f up and get on with it. Okay, let's start with understanding heart rate. Okay, so what is that you want to know? It's super simple. Okay, your resting heart rate and your max heart rate are probably two things that you've heard of. I'm going to dispel a lot of, you know, myths maybe about max heart rate. So forget that. It's bollocks, okay? So let's not, we'll go back to her max heart rate at the end. I don't want you using it. I don't want you zoning off it. And for crying out loud, 220 minus your age times the size of your inside leg multiplied by how many legs your dog's got. Okay, you know, don't be using that method either, okay? Because your heart rate is unique to you. And the first thing that's unique to you is the contractual strength of it. Genetically, before we even do any training, genetically, that is why everyone in your family has got a different heart rate if you did all the same training, okay? So your max heart rate, or so-called elevated, raised exercise heart rate, is going to be very different in a group of five people. One's going to be at 140, one's going to be at 180, and another one could be at 210 or even higher. That's okay, right? So your heart is going to beat, on average, what are we going to say, 70 times a minute at rest? And each beat is called the stroke volume. So as it strokes out volume of blood, this will travel around the system, okay? It will go to the lungs to collect oxygen via alveoli. It will then travel back to the heart and be pumped out via the aorta all around the body. Simple science where it will then feed the cells. It will then come back via your, your veins, your vein, vena cava, into the heart, bosh, lungs, body, all that. And every minute gives us this volume of blood we call the cardiac output. So in sport, what do we want to do? Well, we want to have more blood pumped at a faster rate, coach, but that's just a fast, a higher heart rate. But I don't have a high heart rate, coach. My heart rate's even lower than yours, okay? Take Viagra. No, don't fucking take Viagra. Take drugs. Don't take drugs, okay? What we want to do is to increase the contractual strength of the heart rate. Is that possible? Mm, the heart's a muscle, coach. Yeah, let's develop it as a muscle. How do we do that? Get it to work. Okay, sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, it's got its own blood system as well. It's got its own blood supply. Ah, so healthy capillary network. Yeah, that's going to be good. So basically, left ventricle pumps around the, the body. So right-hand side for lungs, left-hand side for body, thicker muscle wall, more ejection of blood, so removal of blood per beat. Stroke volume goes up per beat. Cardiac output goes up. Therefore, resting heart rate will come down. Why? Because you're sending more blood per beat per minute to working tissues, therefore more oxygen. So the brain says, hey, Bobby, you don't need to work that hard. You can slow down a bit. You're getting enough oxygen to the muscles. Drop it down to 60. Okay, Roger. Okay, thank you, brain. And it will slow down, okay? It's not going on strike. It's not asking for a fucking pay rise. I want, uh, yeah, let's not go there, okay? It will slow down. So your resting heart rate is going to be a much better indicator for fitness, but you knew that, didn't you? You maybe just didn't know how it started to go down because it's pumping more blood. Oh yeah, and the older you get, it might lose a bit of strength. So that extra blood that it used to pump out, it can still do it, but it does it a bit slower. So when you stand up, and you fall arse over tit, and you've got your head in about your gonads, don't worry about that. That's old age. Welcome to it. You're going to squeeze blood a little bit more. So if you suffer from that, go and see your doctor. But squeeze your leg muscles, tense up before you stand up. <laughs> Coach, you've gone crazy, okay? So that's the heart, okay? So it's all about getting blood to working muscles. Yeah, and it's going to get stronger. Right, let's start to dial in. How are we going to measure heart rate? Well, as I said to you, we're going to use monitors. We're going to use watches. I would like, you know, you can ride along looking at your watch, but a little bit dangerous. Try and have some sort of monitor on that's going to be fed into your computer system, okay? Pretty simple. I'm going to put that away. 
just in case, I'm always paranoid about Bluetooth signaling, yeah? So, what we want to make sure uh, is that the, the technology works, okay? Heart rate has got a bloody tendency, okay, to get sweat into it, and so you're, you're making sure, I forgot what I was bloody talking about, yeah, we're measuring heart rate. So make sure that you're going to measure your resting heart rate. Understand your resting heart rate. What is it? Do it for five to 10 days. Every day you wake up. So not just lying still like you're in a fucking coffin, okay? Oh, oh, it's a competition now. Remember, we don't want to be making it into a competition. You know, have it, sit up, take a few breaths, measure your heart rate, then maybe do it again after an hour. Get two points in the morning. I like these reference points. You're gonna get a point from lying down and then to standing up and it will shoot up. That can also be a good indication of a few health issues. But start to get an idea of where it's at. And then if it's elevated at any point, you know you're maybe going to be under attack. Your immune system could be suppressed and it's your heart rate that's beating a little bit harder at rest to send some warriors to kick the shit out of maybe some bacteria that's entered the body before you get the runny nose, the sore throat, the miserable feeling, okay? That's a good little tip and most people know that but they don't follow it. Oh, it's a little bit higher. Oh, it's just because I didn't have a great night's sleep. Why didn't you have a great night's sleep? Okay, right? So now when we're testing heart rate, I'm gonna go through some training sessions. But what you've got to do is you've got to understand your, what people might call now FTHR, your functional threshold heart rate, your 20 minute heart rate, your threshold test heart rate. So if you've done any testing, trainer road Zwift, a 20 minute, 30 minute FTP test, that heart rate is ideal as a starting point for your 20 minute threshold test. If you're a more experienced cyclist and you've time trialed a lot and you've done, say, shorter time trials over 10 miles, you've probably got a good idea what your 20 minute heart rate is. And that is as close as we can make in terms of a non-laboratory test to try and have a point whereby we could hold for 20, 30, 40 minutes, where lactic acid is probably at its maximum in terms of production and removal, okay? production and removal. Now I could get really high tech and we could go on about coupling and decoupling measurements of heart rate, but let's save that for another time. But that 20 minute hard effort, sustainable effort, some people do a 20 minute effort that goes in four or five blocks, steady, hard, harder, hardest. That's not a sustainable 20 minute heart rate, is it? No. It's a full on five minute at the end. It's more of an anaerobic. Oh, take away 5%, coach, and we get FTP. Yes, okay, I'll give you that. It can work. But that heart rate, you'll probably find, guess what? It will stay pretty much the same for a long period of time. Yeah. So your FTP, you would argue if you're getting fitter, it may go from 200 watts to 220 watts after maybe five weeks, maybe go up to 250, 280. It will continue to rise if you perform appropriate training and recovery. But your threshold heart rate won't necessarily change a great deal. And that's why it's so beautiful. And if we use heart rate at threshold 20 minute as the midpoint, okay? This is the point whereby I can just see over the wall into the land of volume of oxygen, I don't know what I'm talking about. The land of VO2 max. A yonder, young man. The pastures are so green. Oh, the air is so fresh. We see over that wall, okay? But up to that point, this is under threshold. This is where heart rate can be a really good indicator. Even at threshold, threshold is good for heart rate and VO2. Because heart rate has a thing called drift. Okay, and this drift at rest is something that catches most of you out, okay, on a hill. You're in your group ride, you'll ride up the top of the hill, you'll go quite hard, probably deeper than you should have. You'll start breathing like a fanny at the top. You'll click it into a bigger gear, and before you know it, everybody else has caught you up and passed you on the downhill, okay? At rest, this drift to plateau can take anywhere between 9 to 12 seconds. Now that's in my experience, and 
experience and I've measured this a lot and we can see this in workouts, have a little look at it yourself. If you do anything over threshold, have a look what happens when you finish that block. It can be round about that when you're fresh, nine to 12 seconds. And this is where I talk in a lot of my clients about jamming the heart rate with particular intensities, okay? So heart rate drift makes it not that great for using it as a VO2 session if you're riding for 30 seconds. If it's got a drift of about nine seconds, oh yeah, that's I'm gonna be almost over. And this is because of this delayed oxygen debt repayment. Okay, I can hear myself, we're getting a little bit too technical, aren't we? Yeah, shut up, coach. You promised us a little bit of humor and keep it real simple. My point is, I'm trying to get across that heart rate is good at the low end, but if you have the right test, okay, 20 minute sustainable effort that you can hold, and I would always ask a rider to do 30 or 40 minutes. Yeah, sustain that and then you definitely, you can pull out good software on the market for training, even Strava, etc. And you can pull out your peak 20 minute heart rate. It'll tell you what it is. And that becomes your FTHR, okay? Not your max heart rate. Even if you know, oh, I've been in a lab, I've measured my max heart rate, because your heart, max heart rate as you get older, will decrease, okay, will decrease. I've seen a, a reduction since the age of 18, my first lab test of 11 beats, okay? Now that's not that great, is it? You know, it's not a lot from 18 to 52, but that's full on max. Now, here's the, here's the funny thing that might happen. You may not have pushed yourself that hard, Remember we've talked before about the attic space, 15% is still in there, okay? So as you get fitter, what might happen is you will access a higher max heart rate only because you're fitter and you can push yourself harder. So don't worry about that. Now there are a number of metrics that affect heart rate very, very quickly. Temperature, hydration. So temperature pushes it up, dehydration, pushes it down, but you'll be working super hard. Pure fueling, lack of glycogen, glycogen depletion, depletion pushes it down, okay? Poor sleep pushes it down. Getting up for the toilet 17 times a night pushes it down. Having kids under the age, well, is there, there's no sort of age description. Does the government give out ages now of when kids will sleep? for at least an hour during the night. <laughs> All you parents with young children, I salute you. Don't worry, it gets harder, don't worry. <laughs> but anything that's gonna affect is normally gonna send it down. Medication, okay, that potentially will send it up. Some medications, beta blockers, etc., will send it down. I've actually worked with athletes who have been on beta blockers. So something that's gonna send their heart rate down, they're trying to send their heart rate up to exercise. That's a complex one, okay? It can be done with timing and such. But there's lots of metrics on it. And people then think, oh, well, that makes heart rate a really shit measurement. I think it makes it such a beautiful measurement because it's giving you data based on where it is around your normal. Because you know what your resting heart rate is, you know what your 20 minute heart rate is, don't you? If not, you're gonna do it in the next week after I show you how to, okay? Coach, move on. Right, how to zone heart rate. This is the biggest complexity in the world outside how to solve the energy crisis. I would put energy crisis first and then I would put heart rate zoning next and then I would how to put get on with your mother-in-law. About third, maybe, yeah? Or you put it second, maybe some of you. Yeah, okay. Ahead of the energy crisis. Actually, I'd put it ahead of the fucking secrets of a black hole. But anyway, there you go. Anyway, how to zone. Now, remember, I'm old and go back to the days when we had three or even two, everything above threshold, everything below threshold. Nowadays, I've seen some zoning systems, they have seven or eight fucking zones, okay? They have more zones than time zones, so they do. So what you've got to understand is there is a lot of guesswork in training. Why? Because every human being on this planet has got a different absorption of nutrients. They've got different contractual strengths of their heart rate at birth, okay? They've got different levels 
of slow twitch, fast twitch fibers. They've got different adaptation rates. They've got different abilities to develop muscle. There's all sorts of things that are unique. So we always look for sort of ranges, but not an FTP coach because it's a fucking number. I've told you before, it's not a number. You always think of 15 up, 15 down. It's a range of 30 at least, okay? Right, so let's look at the most, the easiest way to do zones, okay? The old fashioned way, right? So there are five. Oh coach, there's one above the U2 max. Okay, there's not, right? There may be one written down and somebody will say, oh, Garmin has, I promise you, okay? It's just splitting hairs. Right, here's me. 162, threshold heart rate, has been that way since, before I can remember when I was a young boy. Okay, recovery, below 110. Am I interested in heart rate below 110? I am. Okay, when I'm doing recovery. I don't do a lot of recovery rides because I rest. Endurance, this is my zone two. Now, some people have got different names for this, okay? Now it's, I don't know why, sorry, I've gone to that one, actually. My bad, okay? Where is my, hold on, give me a second. Oh, I think I've, hold on, there we go, sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to give you the actual zones. For everybody watching, uh, that was a delay and a mistake, okay? You can tell it's live then. Okay, so one, recovery, below 68%, and this is of your 20 minute heart rate, people. 20 minute, endurance 69, sometimes 68, okay? Sometimes 68, I'm gonna minimize that and make that go away. Hi, I'm here, okay. Hi. Okay, so 68, uh, 69, sometimes that's 67, 68, oh, who's splitting hairs? 83, so it's 83, 84. So this is key in this 20 minute heart rate, okay? It's always falling round about that range. Now, tempo is sweet spot, or it, some people call it, you know, an upper aerobic, but this is your sweet spot, your tempo, okay? 84 to 94, okay? Threshold. Now, this, guess what, folks, is very similar to working out your power. It's 95 to 105, okay? So that makes it quite a big range where your threshold. And the reason it's a big range is because at this point, we're trying to capture lactic acid being produced and removed. And in the lab, that might be down as low as two millimoles of lactic acid per liter, not the four millimoles that we always talk about as obla onset of blood lactic accumulation when it starts to just, when it gets to that point, it's game over, baby. It's game over, okay? VO2 max, everything above 106% until you're sick. Until you're sick. Now, not everybody will vomit when cycling, but everything above threshold is VO2 max for that heart rate. But it becomes a little bit difficult for you to use that level to monitor efforts with that heart rate because you'll just fucking fall off your bike, okay? No, no two ways about it. Right, okay. Now, so let's do that looking at my heart rate. You can go back, you can freeze that, you can go back and you can take those ones if you're unsure of them. That's the way I would set up. Now, so you look at me, what's your 20 minute heart rate? 162, okay? So now look at my threshold, 153 to 170. It's a massive range. So when I get to 153, sometimes I have had it done, okay, in the lab at round about 157, okay? But when I, oh, I've seen it as low as 150 with some tests. So you may think, well, that gives me loads of room under threshold if it's 162. 
think about the range. So what I'm getting at is this becomes super important. This zone two, my endurance, 111 to 135, okay? So this is my go-to zone two. Now I'm working a little bit higher, the higher end, 130 to 135. Now, what you want to do is when you're in a heart rate zone, you want to go two beats below and set a trigger in your head. Why? Because of the drift, okay? So I'm going to show you a little test you can do to measure zone two, okay? But you can only do it if you've got a 20 minute heart rate. That's the best way. So you'll see that if I go over 170, I go into VO2 max, I can give a toss, right? I, I could not care where my heart rate is when I'm doing VO2 because I have it drilled into my power numbers. So I know exactly where I'm going to be at any particular point when I'm moving up my FTP. Now, here's the trouble, okay? If you have measured your FTP on a 20 minute test that wasn't really a, you know, let's say it was within say 10, 15 watts start to finish. Yeah, I had these huge big spikes in it, okay? It may be that your 20 minute heart rate was a little bit higher. So even if mine goes, say 162, it moves up to 165. All, what happens is it alters the zone two, okay? So I would, you know, I talked in my video I dropped in yesterday about ego-based motivation and task-based motivation. Because FTP is a number, it's very difficult, and I hold my hand up to this, it's very difficult not to be driven by improving that number. But if you can do your next test and start above that number, can you do that? Can you start 10 watts above it? And here's the reason why you'll finish at a lower point and you will not be able to spike and have that last five minute push. You will not be able to hold anything back. You'll warm up properly, start 10 minutes higher, and you will draw down, okay? And that's a good test because you've got everything out of yourself. Okay, so that's a good little tip we would say to an athlete in the lab, what's your FTP, 270, right? We're gonna start at 280. <gasps> what? I normally start at 240, so I can then peak and well, fuck off, okay? Test yourself, right? But trying to get away from the number. So, know your zones. You've got to know them inside out, don't you? You've got to know the tipping point. So my 152 exists in my head a lot. My 135 does as well, okay? Because I tend to not have my heart rate too much in the tempo unless I'm kind of testing, right? So it either spends time here or it spends time up here, right? Now, what about my power? Okay, so if I uh, show you where I am today, okay, so this is I'm maybe a little bit higher than this now, okay, but 260. So can you see the, diff, the, the comparison threshold, zone four? So my... Based on 260, threshold will be standard, okay? Now, I know everybody's shouting at me saying there's no way I've ever had five heart rate zones, coach. Uh, five power zones. I've got seven or I've got eight and they all split up into different ones. Look, take your threshold and then below threshold, you've got sweet spot. Below that, you've got your aerobic building, okay? And that can uh, fall all the way down to zero, but you've got to have this point okay, whereby you're making sure that you're working hard enough based on your heart rate that you're getting a biological stimulus, okay? Now, I don't need to share too much of these because I'm not interested in them. I'm not interested in them in the winter apart from this guy at the top, okay? VO2 max, okay? Now, so when I've made this slide, mine is a little bit higher because that's closer to 320, 325 now, okay? But I'm not interested in them. Fuck off power. I'm only interested in this guy, right? So can you see it? 146 to 197. So my goal to you, if you accept this challenge now, look at where your sweet spot, your tempo, your zone three is. Where's the upper end? I challenge you to move zone two to zone three in the next 12 weeks. Can you do that? We've got 12 weeks to the end of 2022. Anybody watching this live, not you and catch up, because you might be watching it in a year's time, 
take on the challenge. And here's how we're going to start that challenge and have a go. And you can share your updates in the Facebook page. You've got the link for that. It was at the start of the video. Okay, so that's my challenge. I'm going to move it to 2, 230, 235, 236. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. Right, okay, so let's move on, Coachy. You're going at a nice speed now. How to train heart rate. Well, I've told you it's a muscle, okay? It's a very special muscle. It doesn't fatigue. Did you know that? It doesn't fatigue. And how do we have heart attacks and such? Blood flow, blood supply. Cardiovascular disease is one of the biggest killers in the world. It's certainly one of the biggest killers in Scotland. It's probably one of the biggest killers in the UK. Cardiovascular, okay, vascular. So our aerobic system. Most people are training at their zone two, thinking they're at their zone two, but they're actually at what I call their wank zone two. Now, I know that sounds offensive. It's because they're too high and they're just being a wanker because they're too ego motivated. And it's great, but they don't make consistent progress and they fall back to the same point most years. Yeah. If we could actually have a much more disciplined approach, Remember the podcast where I shared what the key traits of a professional, number one, discipline. They have overcome the monotony and know how to move up their zone two and can have zone twos between three and 400 watts. Yes, that is, yeah. But we're not then, okay? We are older, we're slower, we've got other shit in our life to deal with. So it's really, really important that you pay attention to that. So rather than use power, we're going to use heart rate. So a common goal would be in the winter, we would use heart rate because of the internal metric, the biological direct measurement of, of what was happening internally. Power is an output and it will change as much as heart rate will, that output you put out. But that output gives us a great indication of where our strengths and our fitness lie but sometimes it can be a false lie or a false truth for what's happening internally. And that, that's really important because what you're trying to do is you're trying to change the most complex biological organism that, you know, we know, our body. And we're trying to change that from what it understands as steady state, equilibrium, homeostasis, whatever you want to call it and trying to get it to adapt to this more acidic environment. Lower fuel, lower hydration. Exercise is alien, so it is. So we've got to be consistent, regular, monitor the overload in ways that we can adapt from it. Okay, so sometimes power, it can mislead people if they're not using it correctly and they can be training at too high a level because FTP is too high. It's a number. It's not a fucking zone, coach. I ain't going to the bottom of the zone. I'm not weak. I'm a warrior. We're all warriors. You don't have to be at the front of the queue, okay, getting punched in the face every day to be a bigger warrior than the guy at the back waiting for everybody to get tired in front of him, okay? Right, so let me uh, scroll down. I want to give you this one. I've got loads of workouts to share with you over the next few weeks. And we're gonna do live workouts. Let me just put that plug in now. I'll be sharing some zone two testing, training live. You can come and join me. I'll give you at least five to seven days notification of when they're happening. They'll happen in November. And yeah, they'll be fun, but they'll be on catch up as well. So you will get a go afterwards. Okay, so, oh, I don't wanna share that. Fuck, I just done the wrong thing. Okay, look at this, right? So look at this, okay? This is what I'm doing tomorrow. Okay, Tuesday. I got the date on there. Let me put my glasses on. So this is what I'm doing tomorrow. And uh, NP, normalized power, test, two fans, right? This is important. Indoor, two fans for me. So I've got one hour, right? So I've not got my heart rate at the right. This is, I've not, th this will change because this needs to go up to 68%. So what we do, Okay, let me uh, minimize that so you can see me. Right, let me pop that down there, folks. Yeah, you can still see it. Okay, let's put it on me. 
So warm up, 10 minutes, you get your heart rate to the bottom end of zone two. It may take longer, don't rush it. And then what I'm gonna do is, there are different ways to do this. You can do 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. You're going to lap your device. If you, know, if you don't know how to lap, then you, you'll see it anyway. Just mark the time and you're going to ride for one hour or 30 minutes, depending on what your time, you set it up as your test. Now, you're not allowed to look at power. So this is very easy on any screens. Okay, if you're riding on Zwift on a thing, you may want to put a screen up, get a bit of sticky tape and put it on where the power is. Okay, and cover it. That was, we used to put postage notes on monitors in the lab, just cover it up. And if it's on a Wahoo, Garmin, Polar, just make a screen that just says time, cadence, heart rate. You've got to have heart rate, okay? And what you do is, you know your numbers, so I know I'm 135, but I'm a 133 trip wire. So if it hits 133, whoa, I slow down, I back it off gradually, plateau, get it back down, and you just gotta dial in. Now, you will have to monitor the speed because you will end up going a bit too quick and you just slow it down. You're trying to dial it in to the middle. So for most people inside their zone two, you should be able to capture a 10 beat range. So for the first one, I would say, give yourself 10 beats. You'll be able to narrow it down to five beats and get it closer to the top. But try and find your upper and lower, find your middle, and then try and find a few beats around that, okay? It, it's super easy to do. You ride. You just ride, and then you finish your 30 or 40 or 60, whatever you're doing, whatever time you've got, and then you dial back into the data, what was the normalized power, okay? So what I mean by normalized power is, it, will, it normalized power is when we're doing efforts and such and we can average it out. Call it your average power, because you'll be, you'll be doing a fairly steady effort. So you just average it out. So over 60 minutes, is that 100 watts? 150 watts, 200 watts. What is the real indoor zone two power for this particular time in your life? You ride at zone two power and you have a zone one, zone two, 50, 50 heart rate. For a lot of people, waste of fucking time. We need to then get the zone two biologically into the correct heart rate. But this is a sign coach that I'm fit, I'm getting stronger, look at me. Yes, it never gets easier, it just gets faster. As Le Monde, El Gregiano said, okay? So what we've got to do is tweak that. Zone two can become the most precious, beautiful training if you get it right. Oh, it's boring. Is it? Oh, I quite enjoy it. I'm old now. <laughs> I quite enjoy going a little bit steadier. You know, enjoying my bike, but not too steady. Too steady becomes maybe a two hour ride that was actually a bit of a waste of time because biological, think of your body as having a firewall. Okay, it's resisting viruses from, you know, Elon Musk is trying to sell you some bloody drug for uh, making your willy 10 times bigger, probably. Oh, I know. What is he trying to do now? Invade Mars and fucking colonize it with aliens or something? Jesus. Anyway, you know what I mean. Love you, Elon. When are you gonna subscribe to my channel? <laughs> but what I mean is, you've got to understand that, right? So, try that. Yeah, try that. Try it for 30, 40 minutes, okay? Don't know your zone two? Maybe you've got to do a 20 minute test first. But remember, don't do 20 minutes. Try and do warm up, maybe do 30 or 40 minutes. Maybe you've got an FTP test lined up, take it from that. Remember, start your FTP test 10 minutes, 10 watts higher than what your FTP is now, yeah? And try and hold it. And when you can't hold it, drop it, finish off. But this will give me this new power number. And I can do this every week. I can do it maybe every fortnight. And I will do it in the same conditions. Now what I do is the double fan and then I do one with no fans. I look at the heat change, right? Because during the winter, I will spend 80% of time indoors. I will become heat acclimatized. So I will adapt to the sweat. When I do the live sessions, I don't use any fans. So if you're doing them with me, watch how high my heart rate goes on them. But I like to monitor that, okay? I like a, light, I like a high heart rate sometimes. 
But I'll look at the two differences. I won't get too deep into that. That's just for me and my own testing, how I like to monitor that. Okay, so then you would do your own training. Whatever training you've got, you would attack your uh, threshold from the top with VO2, attack it from the bottom with your zone two, whatever types of workouts you're doing, but you come round to regular measurement of it, okay? But use the heart rate. Why not do this indoors and then do one outdoors on a good stretch of road that you can get an hour with no road furniture? I know that's difficult, stop signs and such, but if you can get some quiet roads then okay, but maybe do a 30 minute one then. Okay, but if your heart rate drops and you're, you're held still at traffic lights or such for like 30, 40 seconds, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you, okay? Uh, so that's why indoors can be really beneficial for that. But when you're outdoors training in your zone too, of course you can have that. You just know your intensity. Can you be disciplined to build it though at that level? Because remember, the connection with mitochondrial efficiency, mitochondrial health is unbelievably powerful for when lactic does start to produce. When lactic is producing, we're going to flush and clear it better. And mitochondrial efficiency is, I've taught us this, fuel burning. Zone two is going to lightly use the majority of your slow twitch fibers, okay, rather than fast twitch fibers. When we build it up, to get close to fat max, okay, we will be close to say 60, 40, slow, fast. So for fast twitch fiber athletes, you've got high peak power, you enjoy sprinting, you'll put it in a big gear, you'll grind away at maybe 75 to 85 RPM, you'll find it hard. But here's the thing, people who are constantly grinding in bigger gears, not developing their zone two properly, you're probably very carb dependent. You're very sensitive to carbohydrates. You use carbohydrates a lot, but coach, I've got a fucking big fat belly and a fat arse, but you're not accessing it because of your connection with fast twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers need glycogen. They produce lactic acid. So maybe it's time that maybe you've done the fat for fuel. I've got a course coming out. that's going to go into that in more detail and you're going to do live workouts with me on that, whereby we run on low carbs in the morning. So maybe we do our zone two in the morning on low carbs, not fasted, okay? Not fully fasted, low carbs, meal in the evening, we then exercise again in the morning between say 5 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. We do 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. At that level, this will help us use slow twitch fibers, activate enzymes essential for fat utilization. That just means breaking them down or fuel. So when we are fueled up with carbs and we're in a longer ride, we will be able to use fat for longer before we switch on the glycogen tap, okay? Because as soon as we go to do our VO2 workouts, bloody 100% glycogen, you know, we're firing it in there, okay? So even somebody like me, I'll fall into that trap from time to time uh, and become very carb dependent. Okay, and there is enough fat on me, I promise you. But I've become very carb dependent, so longer rides become a struggle. So maybe you're in that, oh, I get to 40 miles or so, 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles. I fueled really well, but I'm goosed. Yeah, there's more to come in terms of your zone two. That's the very thing that I hear riders say, oh, I need to work on my VO2. I need... No, you don't. You need to get more fuel out of the very thing that's in your, your system, okay? Hope that makes sense, but yeah. Have a little look at that, you can rewind that. It's a really good test. Dial your numbers down, create a little chart, boom, there's where I'm at. Then when you keep continuing to work on that heart rate, we should see some progressive gains in the average power produced. Okay, got it? That's just one. There's hundreds of different ways we can train the zone two. Don't want to give away all my secrets in this one chat because I'm doing a Q&A on Wednesday. Team members, you should have got your email today. Patreon podium members, you should have got your email today. See you on Wednesday for that. If anybody wants more info about Fat for Fuel, we can ask it then, my friends. Okay, you speak too quick, coach. I know, I know. Have I got anything else I want to talk about? Of course I do. What do I call my zones? Anybody guess? And all of these, let me get rid of that. 
So we have, I use this, I've used this for a long time. You've probably heard me uh, mention them when I've done the lives last uh, off season. So zone one for me is spinning. It's just a nice, easy spin. So sometimes if you follow me on Strava, you'll see a lot of my morning sessions and I'll put spinning. When I start to call them singing, so singing for me is zone two because I can hold a conversation and I tend to sing. I do. You'll see me out on the road sometimes, I'll be singing. I'm not listening to ear pod, ear, you know, music or anything, but I'm singing. Zone three, I'm sweating. Zone four, I'm swearing. And zone five, I'm sicking. <laughs> but that gives you a good idea of where you should be in terms of your intensity with these zones. Zone one, uh, in terms of recovery, and I'd say that I don't do a lot of it, that's only because I'm a sick old fucker, right? I don't keep good health. Why would I spend loads of time doing flush exercise? I do them for maybe 20, 30 minutes, a couple of times, right? But I would rather rest. Remember, recovery and rest are not the same thing, right? Some people are doing like one hour recovery rides. I'm like, really? Are you? Are you kind of dialing into zone two a little bit? Any increase in heart rate from its resting point is a biological overload on the system, which suppresses the immune system. If your immune system is messed up from other aspects of life, well, logic's only going to tell you that there is only so much room in the dustbin that your recovery ride can exist. You've got to clear out the bin. And when the dustmen go and strike and nobody's coming to collect your trash, you're fucked. Okay, so you can have all the recovery rides in the world you want, but you're not going to make any progress because your body's going to stay catabolic for much longer. Okay, singing. You're zone two, you will be singing. As soon as you can't sing, you're in zone three because you're sweating. And as soon as you're in zone four and you're swearing, you're in VO2, okay? And threshold into VO2. In VO2, if it hasn't ever made you sick before, you've not done it right. You should feel sick or want to be sick. <laughs> I've not ever worked that hard, coach. Join me this November for some VO2 sessions. Anybody who's online right now that's done any, they can vouch for them. They are fun, okay? Right, okay, I wanted to talk about max heart rate. People ask me loads, why haven't we sent, there's maybe a question in there. Start to get your questions ready. I've probably got some time, haven't we, folks? Oh, we got 12 minutes to the witching hour before the 50 pence I put in my meter runs out. Yeah, fucking UK energy. Terrible, isn't it? All around the world, though. Right, okay, so what about Max heart rate, coach? What do you want to know about it? It's not a good indicator for setting threshold. We did used to use it. We used to use it when we knew what max heart rate was, do a maximum test. Now, what we would do was, a lot of riders have maybe done VO2 max tests in the lab with a Douglas bag, mouthpiece in them, you know, all sorts of stuff. That was a good indication of max heart rate, right? But we would take roughly 92% of that max heart rate to find the threshold heart rate. So if you think you know what your max heart rate is and you've done a 20 minute test, what are the two scores? Max heart rate, 92%. And your 20 minute average full gas, you know, consistent effort, your FTP test heart rate. If they're close, they're the same, then well done, probably right. So, but max heart rate is very hard to indicate what is max, because as I say to you, if you're a beginner, even slightly more advanced, it's, it's probably unlikely that you've ever been in a scenario where it was life or death. It was just you on a bike. Sure, you chased the group when you got dropped on the hill and you got a really high heart rate, but you suddenly found in a hot day, you got an even higher one where you were just looking at uh, internet pictures. Oh, no, sorry. You weren't doing that, were you? <laughs> what I mean is, you suddenly, you know, so don't use it as an indicator of setting zones. And it's not an indicator of how unfit you are if it goes super high. I've just told you it's to do with contractual strength. Okay, it's unique to you. The speed that it rises to maximum could be an indication of how fit you are if all you're doing is ficking walking up stairs, right? That's not a good sign, but nobody on this channel is uh, at that level, are we? So it will get higher, 
as you get fitter. So I would say that's a good little indication, but it's unlikely you'll be ever in the scenario because remember, 15% of attic space exists there. There's probably a few people have gone to 14, 13, 12, maybe even 10. You've gone there. And I, I'm going to share this with you. When you get there, and when you open that first door into that attic space, when you're put in a scenario, a situation, and I'm not talking just about on your bike. Come on, let's be honest here. This is life. I'm teaching about how to improve your health. When you open that door and you have to go there, when fucking life has just kicked you in the nuts, it's kicked you in the teeth, it's giving you a wedge right up the crack of your ass. You've opened the door and you've been slapped in the face. You've been hit again and you just keep going and you finally find your way out of the shit, okay? And the sun starts to shine. You will never, ever look back. Cycling will become easier. But if you've not been there in life, and the opportunity arises on the bike, and I call it that man in the mirror, when you are faced with a decision to look closely at yourself, I can't give any more, or can you? Because why is it in every laboratory test, when a rider is told you have 20 seconds to the finish, they increase their intensity? Because they can see the finish. Well, imagine that the finish is life or death. It's not that important, coach. It's only a ride. If you open that door in your mind and you go into that attic space, life opens up. I mean that. It opens up and it becomes really special. You can achieve anything. You can achieve anything you want. Because remember, there is only one off-season in life. That's when you're fucking dead. Right? So, try your hardest. Right? to beat that max heart rate because it might just take you to a place whereby once it's done and the endorphins have relaxed and left, you look back and think, shit, I'm a little bit better than what I thought I was. And remember yesterday I was talking about the ego and the task orientated. Try and tease yourself away from that ego-based motivation, what other people are doing. They're not you. Look at yourself now, this minute. Maybe tomorrow you'll do the one hour zone two heart rate test, like me, I'll do a little spin in the morning and then boom, later on I'll do it again. Two workouts. I did less than five hours training last week, but I did nine sessions. I'm not training until November, but I did nine sessions in under five hours. Okay, you haven't got time for that. Well, these were all short ones. Planned them in, boom. The closer I can make my touch points on the bike, the better I can replicate long rides. Tiny little bit of a splash of overload. Soak it up. It works, people, okay? Especially the older we get. Right, okay. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me look at some questions, folk. Okay, so I've got another screen. Oh, look at you. Another screen. Can I just go back? Uh, hey, folks, can I just look at looks? Hey, we've got 222 viewers live right now from all around the world, listening to my drivel. Okay, folks, if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for joining. My coaching goes back to the 1980s, believe it, when I started my journey as an athlete and a coach. And I've got loads to share. We're going to be here for a while. I've only just discovered YouTube and uh, what it can do. I'm not... Uh, I would someone say the other day, you're older than the average YouTuber and you're not a normal YouTuber. Is that such a thing? Okay. But yeah, go and find me on TikTok. I expect to go and look and find myself to have at least 32, did I say, or 33 followers. <laughs> hey, hit that like button, folks, if you can. I've got to do more of that shit, you know. Subscribe if you can. Uh, you just have to hit that like button. This will share the channel to more people because we've got lots to share. But please, come and find me in the Facebook community group, kinetic community group. It's a private group. I'll let you in as long as you're not a fucking weirdo, right? You're coming in and then we'll talk more in there. Okay, right. Okay, let's look at uh, some questions, folks. To... Do I need to go back any further? Anyone get any questions? Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, coach, are there any physical metrics to gauge zone two without power? Breathing, through your nose, I know ability to talk is not a good one, but I cycle a lot of money. I'm guessing, look, you've got no measurements in terms of heart rate or anything. So use the singing, use the spinning, singing, 
sweating, swearing, sicking uh, concept I use. It's a rough estimate. It'll get you there, okay? We talk about ventilatory threshold point one and ventilatory threshold point two. So that point, if we were doing a submaximal test look, the coach would look at you and you may have done a submax test and it's trying to get to that point where there's a change and you start to breathe deeper. At that point, you're changing into VT2. This is a change in terms of the nervous system starts to get overloaded and there are changes going on, okay? So you're trying to stay at that uh, point below. Uh, I probably need to go back further, but I will jump forward now because I've just asked for questions. I did say wait, didn't I? Uh, let me just do this one. How long zone two exercises long enough to make a difference and what's too long for having more meaning to it? Okay, we're falling into that trap. I'm going to probably pronounce your name wrong. Uh, Tapani, Tapani. The, everybody talks about the four hour rule to activate more mitochondrial. Aerobic or endurance metrics can be improved in a 30 minute workout. Apart from this, probably the mitochondrial depth and strength. Okay, but 30 minutes. And what we mean by endurance markers is everything's about resisting fatigue. So what you're trying to do is to remove the buffers that will be built in to limit the buildup of lactic acid. So the, the myth about everybody doing four hour rides is, is crap because not everybody wants that as a goal to be able to ride in a grand tour, do they? Okay, so touch points, you wanna turn up and work and you want to keep the majority of your workouts not in zone one if you're doing a 30 minute workout or you've only got short time, get it into zone two, okay? Wind it up, boom, deliver, okay? Because otherwise you could be spending a lot of time not breaking through the firewall. Okay, hope that made sense. Right, okay. You're swearing in all zones, it was. I probably do. I I'm going to clean my, my act up. I've got some sort of, you know, ambitions to do a little bit more sort of public speaking. Uh, I'm quite a good public speaker actually, but yeah. Uh, with alcohol fuel, uh, we'll, we'll miss that, okay? It is full of sugar. Uh, resting is 52, took on a hill recently that took me all the way up to 173. Well done, Darren, yep. If you're ever looking to do maximum testing, do a 20 minute test and you can stick the last five minutes up a hill you'll find max heart rate. That's a good way of doing it, okay? My RPE and heart rate are never the same. Uh, hey, Rick, that's a really good uh, point. I may spend some time on that because remember, as we get older, and this has been scientifically proven in a lot of research, RPE will get more intense as we get older. Makes sense, doesn't it? That we, we start to feel the aches and pains. But physiologically, we can still put out high levels even though we feel an RPE a lot higher. There's not a problem with that, okay? So RPE, it can be good at lower zones, but as it gets to higher zones, it's gonna lose its impact. Uh, Rick, oh, you've put any reasons. Hope that makes sense, okay? There are, if you go and research, especially triathlete studies done in over 50 year olds, RPE, uh, perceived exertion, this is people, is higher than what they expected to have done with their results. And these are blind tests, right at this level, do do do, on feel, okay? And what number do you give and getting them to sort of guess what they put out, etc. That's something I do a lot. You'll see that in the lives. I'll, I'll, I'll dial into a feel and I'll look and say, and I'll try and guess live on the screen what my heart rate is, what my power is and such. You should be able to do that as well, okay? Uh, do do do, can't heart rate response give me advice on fat max zone? Yeah, uh, your fat max zone is probably likely to be uh, closer to the middle of, of zone two. I'll do a session on fat max because uh, we're kind of running out of time here, uh, but I'd like to talk more about that. I'll show you my fat max, my testing uh, as well, uh, because if you do a metabolic test, you will find it a lot lower than your FTP test. Anyone done one? Because you can't go over that steady point. And metabolic testing will test VO2 and work down from that, not FTP. And that's how a pro tests. They don't necessarily dial in to measure an FTP, they measure a VO2. So that, that can be useful as well if, you're, if you've got the, you know, I've got a couple of watt bikes. Actually, they're over there. 
uh, and we can then dial into a, a VO2 test. If you've got that app or you use Trainer Roder Swift, try that and then work your zones out from FTP down rather than F from VO2 down. Hi coach, can you explain the training difference benefits in power zone two and heart rate zone two? Uh, well, I'm not too sure I understand that question. Uh, they should be coupled together. Uh, so you're always using, you may find that your power stays in zone two, but your heart rate goes to zone one. You need to up your power. You need to move your FTP up if that happens. That's the whole goal. Internal metric is going to be an internal demand on the system. An output is just an output. It's just throwing a dart in a dartboard. What's happening indoors is key. And when I mean indoors, internally, because that metric is telling us what's happening because the power output doesn't necessarily measure what lactic acid levels are doing. Okay? What blood lactates are at. You got it? So, yeah, if you're not matching them up, you're... you're you may be termed what you might have seen something called decoupled. Uh, so you need to couple it up and move up the zone, I would say. So in the winter, don't use power on the low zones. So even on your outdoor rides, turn it off. Just look at heart rate. Indoors, you can do some training from the top with VO2 and use power that way. I, I would strongly recommend that for any level of rider. Power indoors, heart rate outdoors. Super simple, okay? Uh, coach, no questions. Just a big thank you for sharing some workouts on Training Peaks. Doing, oh, thank you very much, Dave. Love it. Good people. Yeah, I don't mind sharing. i got loads more to share. Uh, hey, coach, can you train Zone 2 every day? Yeah, sure. I, I wouldn't necessarily do it every day because, you know, I have to make the dinner and put the bins out sometimes. But I would, I would give yourself a rest. Remember, training exists to create an increase in resistance to fatigue. Health exists to promote fitness. Fitness does not drive health. I've said this over and over. We'll get this in the t-shirts. By the way, we've got branding coming very soon, okay? And we'll get the t-shirts. I've got branding, but we were doing some new sexy stuff for the new t-shirts, okay? But health drives fitness. Not the other way around. Fitness creates stress, which creates more free radicals, creates a catabolic state, suppression of the immune system. So when you, you think about that, Anyone can do a workout, but don't become attached to the stimulus of a workout being the only thing that's going to drive your fitness up. Oh, I missed a workout. So fucking what? Okay, focus on your nutrition, hydration, stress, and sleep management. You'll get fitter by osmosis. Workout ready. Okay, so, yeah, you can, but get some rest. I would over the winter, James, depending where you're at, maybe do, you know, 80, 90%. Have one session a week. That's VO2. Now I'm sharing some VO2 workouts with some of my clients right now and I'm creating various ranges of variable workouts. I'm going to share some of them, some very basic ones, not the sexy ones, but I'll share the basic ones in November, okay? These are game changers for some people working at VO2. Uh, join a group ride with some stronger riders. My heart rate reached a new max of 205. Welcome to group riding, okay? If it's not your heart rate going up, uh, somebody will get their willy out and measure it against yours. It will happen. That's all it is. <laughs> Group riding has got a, in my look, career, that's where it's at. Okay? You want to go quick, you've got to go and find where the quick boys are. Yeah, and go and ride with them. But you've got to build it into your training so that you recover from it. Because you're only as good as what you recover from, not what you do. As I said, anyone can create stimulus. Anyone can put electrodes on their bollocks and give themselves a shock, okay? It's recovering from that. That was a bit twisted, coach. Would I work out the FTHR on my latest 20 minute ish from training peaks or my highest? Highest in the last year, Ian. Always highest, okay? Hi, coach. Sorry, missed most of this tonight. Uh, just got back from outside. We'll catch the full session. Good luck, Dave. Loads of drivel, loads of nonsense. Thanks for the answer. I think I got from it. I usually do two to four 30 minute blocks, so two, but I guess less could have the same outcome uh, with less fatigue as long as you can recover, okay? Long as you can recover. Franz, great content. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, hi. I'm going through these and folk are sort of, I'm late again. Joe, where the fuck have you been? 
Yeah, come on. Lisa, I'm sorry. Oh, my book. Right, my book. I've got a guy writing my book with me. We've got another chapter done today. I'm on the third one. Yeah, version. Uh, and he's working quicker than me. So what we have done is we've watered it down and simplified it. And it made it a nice little story. But it does, I want to give you the concepts that I talk about in an introductory way that you can follow. And you can create your own workouts. You can create your own training plan. You can understand where we're going with health reasons. You can dial into some psychological profiling, motivational drivers. You can look at your own personality and you can tweak that so that you just become a fucking great person. I think that is great, okay? And if I can, I'm going to say something terrible here. No, I'm not going to say it. I was looking to try and give it away for free, but we will put some fee on it. I've got to start making some money. Okay, hey coach, thanks for your answer. That's okay, look, no problem. If you're using zone test and improve power, how would you adjust FTP or should you do an FTP test? I'm guessing, Shane, you've already got an FTP. Okay, so you've got a number that's got 15 watts above, 15 watts below. If you're moving your zone two uh, and you're seeing that regular from regular testing, you don't need to keep doing an FTP test. Just put a few more watts, remember. It's a 15 watt upper range. So if you think of 15 watts up from where you, let's say you're 250 right now, the next full movement would be to 265. Anywhere else in that is still going to fall within a range. You got me? So let's say you make it three parts for a range, five watts every time. Move it up five watts and see how you do. Okay? You don't need to keep testing. Sometimes you can look at data. I've been doing it for years and I can tell where it should go. But I would say full range is 15 watts, three parts of a range, five watts every couple of weeks if you're training hard, yeah? Then do a test, say, every eight weeks and start, uh, use your last test and where you think you've moved it to. Say you've moved it up 15 watts, but you're going to fall into that category of I said, you're going to start at 10 watts higher anyway on any next test because you don't want to finish with this huge big ramp up, okay? Hope that helps. Joe, awesome advice. Thank you very much. Uh, great training plans. Love using them and sharing them. Joe, but you're a star, okay? You're a superstar. Daniel just joined in. Don't know if the question dropped, but I was wondering how to deal with heart rate drift on a ride six hours. Training goal is ultra cycling. Heart rate drift as in going down or up, okay? So heart rate will go down if you become dehydrated or glycogen depleted, okay? Heart rate drift up. For that type of training, length, you don't want it. You want to be dialing into zone two, into zone three as well. You'll just fluctuate between the two. But you don't want to fall into zone one necessarily for that level. But it's a fueling issue. A good measure is if you're on, a, say, a, a tougher three, four hour ride and you get to that last hour and your heart rate is dropping, but your legs are jammed, they're screaming, and you have fueled, that's a fat for fuel issue a dehydration issue, and maybe a little bit of, you know, straightforward fueling when you get that experience and that heart rate's down. Don't let that happen. Stay hydrated. Lots of people eating well, but they don't drink well on their bike. VO2 max one time a week during off-season. Yep, yep, yep. Patrick, guy of the latest GCN vid says zone two training should be just zone two training with nothing higher in that session for best effect, true or false? Nah, not, not necessary. Look, I, I, again, a lot of guesswork. Uh, zone 2 training, de again, depending on your time, do you want to ride a Grand Tour? Zone 2 training has got its place. I would, I would keep most of it in Zone 2, but I would also experiment with a little bit of Zone 3, and I would definitely experiment once a person was fit with lactate bullets, you know, creating a 20 to 30 to 40 second explosion then dialing it back down into zone two to soak up that lactate as a fuel. You've got to, you've got to do what I call the push the buttons. So every single zone, there needs to be a ride at least once a week where you hit all the zones. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's more important than no pain, no gain. That's a bollocks statement. But if you don't use it, you lose it. You've got to be constantly oiling the chain. Okay, so yeah, I, I probably know what they, they're, they're talking about, but again, be clear on who they are targeting. Is it you or is it a racer or such? So, okay. 
understand that. But yeah, lactic sessions can work in zone two, but you want to make sure that you've moved, you're moving your zone two. A lot of people will jump to these because they get bored. But yeah, try and have at least one ride a week where you really do zone two as zone two. As I always say, don't make a truth become a lie. Right? I've uh, been following your fat for fuel. Does it still work if I push the workout until lunch? Not the sub-threshold ones. Okay, there's only three ones. Try and do them in the morning. You can do the other ones later. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, da -da -da. Thanks for all the content. Very helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So is FTHR between L1 and L2 lab test. Your lactate one and your lactate two. Uh, Martin, I, I would probably need a little bit more info on that. If you've got a lab test, you will have, they'll give you clearly indicated what your uh, threshold heart rate is, I'm sure, okay? Messages under review. Uh, lots of sex greatly increases cycling endurance speed. I'm showing that. Yeah, Edwin. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> Edwin, it wasn't you. I promise. I can't pronounce. Uh, whatever. I can't pronounce your name. Okay. Produces a lot more testosterone. Okay. Lisa, sounds ideal. I don't mind paying for the book. Yeah. It, we're hopefully going to out for Christmas. So end of November. Okay. That's the goal. Be available in hard copy. <laughs> It'll be available on Amazon, but the first one will be hard copy. Okay. Foxy Zella. I love that name. Thank you. Your video's an insight. Miles, thank you very much for joining, buddy. Dave, great. Right, 212 people on. How much, uh, how many likes did we get? Did we go over 100? Anyone see? I can't see when it goes over 100. For some reason, it screws up my screen. I can't see it. Hey, folks, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sorry that I speak so quick at times. But hey, are you looking for some different content? What kind of topics are you looking for? I want to talk about workouts and heart rate and power for a couple of sessions. Uh, start to share a few workouts and obviously jump on and we'll start to do them. We will keep the Monday night going though and we will start to try and introduce some shorter lives as well where I'm answering questions. There will be more video footage inside the Facebook group. I'm going to go out to Spain on the 15th of October. We're going to do some filming, we're going to do some riding around there and I'll capture some more short content as well. So folks, as always, if you've got any questions, fire them through. If you're looking to uh, get coached at this moment in time, please don't message me. There are no spaces at the end and that's why we're building the courses so that I can engage with more people. Okay, we've got another question. Quickly come through if I've got time. Hi coach, sorry. That was asked already. What is the most precise zone two mark method? 60, 75, 6. I've done it. Yeah. Go back, Martin, and you'll see it's a little bit higher than what you think, okay? Uh, a little bit higher than them. Max heart rate, no. It's of threshold heart rate, FTHR, your best 20 minute heart rate, okay? If it was of max heart rate, I said the old, old, old way, decades ago, we would use this, run about 92% of that max heart rate, okay? Hey folks, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed it. We've had a fun time, yeah. Okay, so hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you want. Yeah, you can do it. Go on, just hit it. <laughs> okay, folks, you take care and I'll see you all in the next video. Keep smiling, keep swearing, keep sweating, keep spinning, but most of all, just keep training. <laughs>